in the way that we did, um, it, it's brought us closer to him. It's brought us, um, it, it's created a whole new relationship for us. And, and part of what we learned was our relationship with food and, and, and what that looks like. And because the, the idea comes from unconditional love. Right. And people who need our help and, and, and everything in our life that needs our help has to come from a place of unconditional love. So, okay, so, so how, does, how does that, like, from someone that changed their lifestyle, because you changed your lifestyle, well, I did too. We all did at some point. How did that unconditional love factor into your seeking out and, and changing your lifestyle to, to a, more of a plant-based and no animal product type of a lifestyle? Yeah, you know, so um, when we dig deeper into, you know, you know what, what's the safety of our food look like? What's the safety of our water and things like that, right? Um, right learned a lot about factory farming and, you know, just kind of segue a little bit into what's going on today with COVID-19. It, it's not a surprise. Now I'm not a scientist. I'm not someone, I'm not a doctor, but it's, it, to me, it's a bit of, a bit of common sense. You know, right. when you look at factory farming, for example, we cram animals into these cramped space where they're literally weight in their own feces, each other's feces, in each other's urine most of the day. And then they get sick. We pump them full of antibiotics. Um, 80% of the antibiotics used today goes into factory farming. And then, right. then when we go into consuming those things. Yeah, like, that's, actually, before you go on, that antibiotic thing is something we've talked about recently before, myself with others, in that the fact you don't know if the animal products you're buying originated from sick animals. And the fact that you're saying that 80% of all antibiotics are given to animal farming operations the animals probably are sick, and yet there's no way to tell if it was or was not sick when you're buying that product. So you, if you were to assume anything, like you should never assume anything, the assumption would be you're buying a product from a sick animal, right? And, and, and you know for sure they've been pumped full of antibiotics. I mean, that's just, they have to. Yeah. I mean, there's no way around that. Um, so, so to me, when I started looking into what that looked like, and we, we don't have to get into, you know, chickens, for example, they genetically modify chickens entirely nowadays for, for the breast milk. Right. And that causes a litany of, of health issues with the chickens. Um, and, and, and I mean, we could go on and on about all that, but, but the, the, the basics of it is, is that, you know, when we look at how we treat, you know, mother nature will respond to how we treat it. Mm -hmm. And, and there's no surprise that we've had, a, a, and this isn't the only, you know, uh, uh, health-related illness we've had from animals. I mean, this is just one. I mean, look at mad cow disease. Right. You know, blind flu. There's the avian flu. And, I mean, the list goes on and on. Yep. Most go yep. back to animals, and, and, it, and it goes back to the way that we've been treating them. So, it, it, to me, it's just common sense. that You know, we can't treat our planet and, 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 and other living beings like this you can't create them to make them to suffer and then make them sit in these unsanitary conditions for so long and then expect us to just become out clean and healthy. I just don't, I can't see that as being clean. And healthy. Right. It's a, it's a disconnect for sure. Yeah. 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 So, so that was a big factor for you. Yeah, it was, you know, so that like when I started really embracing, cause, cause I got to tell you, there's, there's some serious power in the, in the idea of unconditional love. You know, like I said before, when, when, when we stop trying to figure out our son Jackson and figure out how to fix him and embrace the love, I, I mean, everything completely changed. I mean, he started talking more, you know, because he, he's nonverbal and he has social and sensory challenges. Mm -hmm. He started engaging with us more. Um, yeah. When I came to the doors, he would run up to me versus when I, but before it was as if I wasn't even home. You know, I, just it's a whole different relationship we built just on unconditional love. And when I saw the power of that, it, 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 I felt I found it important to say, well, how can I apply this to the things that I've learned in this journey of trying to figure things out? Mm -hmm. and, and that made just made perfect sense. Like, why won't we just move to a plant based diet? And, then, and you know, and, and then you look at, I mean, there's a great documentary that, that you showed in the festivals, uh, um, the Game Changers. Yeah. I mean, premier athletes, champion athletes are are using plant based diets. And, and becoming champions. So the, the argument that you don't get enough protein or you don't get enough, you get plenty. I mean, I'm a highly active person. I work out every day, six, seven days a week. Um, I eat only plants, mostly whole food plants, and I feel amazing. I feel more clear of mind. I've got more, I'm 42 years old, and I've got more endurance than when I was 18. Yeah. That was, 
You know, so uh, it just to me, it's just crazy to say that you can't do it. In fact, it's you use a lot less resources in these factory farms. And that's another thing, too. You know, you look at all the resources these factory farms use. Um, you know, the amount of water and food it takes to feed a cow or a pig or, or a lot of chickens is many more times than what it, you need for to feed people. It's not efficient. That's correct. It's not efficient at all. Yeah. Um, but we've allowed these industries to kind of take over um, our thought process, but with the marketing of lobbying, and, and it becomes culture, which it has been, I think, for many of us. Many of us had to transition to a whole food plant-based diet, where, it, honestly, it, it should have just been given to us from, from day one, but they've kind of taken over, and it's, it's important for uh, those of us who have gotten to that space to help other people understand who want to listen, because um, you only have people that really want to listen. Yeah, well, I mean, these are all good reasons that you're bringing up, and I think that more and more people are embracing them, and I think that everyone says that they 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 want to treat others well, they they love animals, so I think that the more anybody digs into this, the more they realize there's no choice, really, in moving away from these animal products. You have to, and, and, and even people who say, well, I don't buy animal products or food that was raised on factory farms, you still end up, like I may want to talk about the psychological aspect of this, You, one of them is you still end up killing an animal against its will and it has that rush of adrenaline or whatever goes through someone's body when it knows it's about to die because there's always that point and it's going to die against its will and then you consume that so that becomes part of, of you and that's, that's not a good thing. Yeah. It's funny you say that, you know, there's, there's people that will argue that, well, there's, they can kill him in humane ways. Okay, well, let, you know, turn, put the shoe in the other foot, though. You know, like, what's a humane way for you to die? You know, or, or a loved one. You know, what's the most humane way for your loved one to die for someone else to survive? And I don't know a single person who will say, well, this is the humane way to do it, because there isn't, you know? Yeah. Why for someone else to live? And when that's not a necessary action to take, when you can go this other route, and it's more efficient from a, just from a process and procedure standpoint, it's more efficient to do plant-based agriculture over, uh, you know, animal agriculture. Um, th there's no argument, you know, for that. And, and not to mention, we're, we're breeding these animals into existence to, to suffer and die. Mm -hmm. You know, and another point I just would like to bring up briefly is um, the dairy industry, people think that dairy is very harmless. But what people don't understand is these cows are forcibly impregnated. So right. you're basically raping a cow to, to impregnate them. Um, and then their calves are ripped away from them um, at birth. Now, uh, to keep them, you know, and, and if you've ever seen a pregnant woman, right, you know, they kind of have that, they usually have that little bit of a waddle. You know, I remember my wife with my two kids had a bit of a waddle. <laughs> yeah. It was highly uncomfortable for her, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. It more than anything. It is highly uncomfortable at that stage. Um, these cows are are made are forced to live that way their entire life, and a cow yeah. can then you know, live for about six years until they have to kill it for its meat. A cow can normally live twenty plus years, um, so that that's that's one. But uh, you know, that's not a humane way to treat these animals. It, it's 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 quite harmful to to those to those beings. Oh yeah, um, for sure. And and like you say, these these cows are kept pregnant most of their lives, at least the usable life that, that a farmer considers them usable for. And then when that baby is removed, they know it. They know that that baby was taken from them. They kept that baby in their body, just like any other mother for would keep a baby for months on end, but know something happened and they, they never get over that, you know? And, and then that also is part of what you're consuming, right? That, that type of emotion, it's, it's not good at all. You know, I would challenge anybody listening to watch a video, pull up on YouTube, a video of a cow being separated from their calf and the sounds that they make and the actions they take. If, if you have any humanity in you, you're going to feel sad for that cow. Yeah, 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 for sure. That's a humane thing. It's just not. It just can't be. Yeah, well, let me ask a question about more of the, on the plant end of things. Sure. What, are you, what are your feelings about, you know, different – processes for growing plants. I mean, because there's all kinds of processes that involve pesticides, herbicides, insecticides, and then there's there's organic and non-chemical ways of growing things. What are your thoughts about all those different things? 
Yeah, that's, you know, um, that's a really good question. When early on when my wife and I were doing research um, into the safety of our food, that uh, pesticides and herbicides is a big one. Um, yeah, because we're trying to figure out what causes autism, and, and nobody knows. Right. We figure it out ourselves. Um, and, and I can say this, that, um, you know, glyphosate's a big, um, if I hope I'm pronouncing that right, um, it's a big, it's a um, uh, herbicide that goes on our food. Um, yes, gl glyphosate roundup, the active ingredient roundup, yeah, yeah. And they genetically modify these foods to withstand the that chemical so it can kill the uh, weeds and not kill the plant. Mm -hmm. um, and although I didn't find a lot of information that really um, led to harmful effects of, of the actual genetically modified foods, not to say that that's not the case, but what I have found a, more and more evidence about is the glyphosate. Um, it, 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 it is highly uh, carcinogenic to people. Um, and the right. fact that we're all seeing our crops with it and then they try to tell us that it's safe, um, that to me just can't be the case. Um, I agree. I tend to agree with that. Yep. And then, and then if you do a little more digging into the uh, processes and procedures in for the FDA and how they verify these things are safe, uh, most times they rely on the company who produced the chemicals and produced the products to give the, the information to them to say whether it's safe or not. Grade their own tests. They grade their own <laughs> It makes no sense to me like how that's even allowable. When I found that out, I was completely floored. I, I, I said, well, how do we know for sure it's safe? And, and the fact yeah. is, and, but, you know, uh, there's an unprecedented case. I want to say a year or two ago in San Francisco, there was a gentleman who was, um, who worked, um, closely with that chemical, uh, glyphosate. And, uh, he actually was one of the first, he actually was the first person to successfully sue, uh, I think it was, um, the company that, that produces it. Monsanto, I believe, yeah. And he, and he won. Um, he won the case uh, because he proved that it is carcinogenic, which has been contrary to the information that's been put out. Yeah, yeah. And, and to give like my version of your summary, too, like another way of looking at it, because it's hard for people to understand this thing. They just hear glyphosate, they hear Roundup, they hear Monsanto, like the devil. You know, I, I think people say it, but they don't understand the process. Like you described it well. Like the way I describe it is that – it's a chemical, I think you said this too, that should and will non-selectively kill any plant it touches, including grass, like woody shrubs, and everything will be killed off. So it's a great killer of plants. So somebody got it in their mind somewhere, well, hey, what if we could get it to just kill the plants we don't want and get it to make, allow to remain living the plants that we do want? So that's the whole idea behind the GMO a Roundup Ready, soybeans, other things. Most of the food that you buy has probably been farmed in this way unless it's truly organic and chemical free. So they, when they're growing like, to say, soybeans or corn, they'll grow it like they normally do. And then when it comes time to weed, they won't selectively do anything. They'll spray the entire field with the Roundup. So the way the Roundup works, so the glyphosate works, is it gets absorbed and sucked into the plant, sucks it in to its system, and that's how it kills the plant. But in this case, like you said, they, they've engineered these crops that we eat to not die. They live and they have that component in them. Now, when you ask this and you tell this to the people who, are, who work with these companies, they say, oh, well, the plant neutralizes this, com this chemical, right? It, yeah, it stays alive and it neutralizes. But we all know if you read the bottle, if you read the warnings on the bottle, it says, like, don't let this get on your skin. Don't drink this stuff. You know, poison. So there's got to be some, I mean, in my mind, just thinking logically, there's got to be some remnant of that in the plant, if not a lot of a remnant of that chemical. And then you're eating it. And I don't know of any long-term studies that have ever taken place before that was released that tested someone like, let's say, exclusively eating food that was farmed in that way versus organic or chemical free methods. So we don't know the difference. We may never know the difference. I think that those companies don't want that information out there. They will, they will usually, if you ever question them about this, they'll say, oh, we allow, this allows people to feed the world like this, but it really allows, I think, world destruction because anytime you use chemicals, right, in agriculture, they run off, they get into the water supply. Even if they don't do anything else, they contaminate all the water. So that's destroying the, uh, the world right there. And um, so I... And also, so you guys are aware, 
this stuff originated, correct me if I'm wrong, Chad, but I think it was the early 90s is when this stuff started hitting the market, right? So anything grown before the early 90s never came in contact with that chemical. So if you've seen stuff that spiked up since the early 90s, it may have some kind of relation to this Roundup glyphosate chemical, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it was like 95 or 96 is when they... Oh, it's 90s, okay. One of the first things they started uh, giving it to was um, they were doing it on, on cotton and they were giving the cotton seeds to, to cows for uh, that they were spraying the stuff with and, and doing the GMO uh, cotton seeds with. And they started feeding the cows that we eat. <laughs> uh, Oh, and, and, and you're absolutely right. You know, and it's interesting you talk about, uh, you know, Monsanto or companies that produce this type of stuff. You know, the thing to think about is trust. Right. You know, um, what, what kind of trust do we have? And if you do a little homework on, on that company, Monsanto specifically, they were a co-partner in making Agent Orange back in Vietnam. And Agent Orange was supposedly safe. Um, and then all these veterans were dying from Agent Orange poison. Yeah. So, I mean, and, it, you know, so it, it's about trust for me. And, and when you do the homework, there's, there's a big question for a big, huge question mark when it comes to that. So I would just be cautious. And they've changed the name. I believe they're now Bayer Chemical or something like that they, because they, they're moving away from that name because of the trust issue that you bring up. Right. And Bayer is trusted because, you know, it's like aspirin that you can give to kids and all this stuff. I thought that was an interesting merger when that happened. I said, hmm, that, there's a little bit of something fishy there, and that makes sense that they would try to do that. Yes. Uh, and, and they've been around for over 100 years. A lot of people don't know that, too. They, um, Monsanto's been around for, for, I think, since 1912 or something like that. Something okay. Like that. I, I also want to mention something else that I am skeptical of or, or curious about, and that is the um, gluten-free foods and the whole gluten-free movement. There are some people out there that do believe that Yes, I mean, yes, there is celiac disease. We know that, okay? And people who have celiac disease need to avoid gluten. There's no question about that. Uh, we, I don't know if we're really going to get into that in this video, but for people who don't have celiac disease, which is most everybody, people are still going gluten-free saying, oh, I feel better. You know, I, I have gluten sensitivity, which, which is a real thing, right? People are sensitive to it, but the question is why? And I think that some of the evidence that's out there says that it may be because it's 